The state of Nebraska has never seen a week like this and the anticipation is building with each and every minute. Hello and thanks for joining us tonight on the Sports Sound Off March through March special. I'm Chase Williams and we've got everything you could want packed into the next 30 minutes. We'll take a look at each matchup Creighton and Louisiana Lafayette in Nebraska against Baylor. Plus we have exclusive one on one interviews with both Tim Miles and Greg McDermott is unmatched by any in program history. Not once has Creighton seen a player like Doug McDermott and not once has this team been in the national spotlight like it has this year. It's a great time to be a Blue Jay and they're ready to take flight. It's all about the Sweet 16 for Creighton, but they must take one step at a time. The first is Louisiana Lafayette. Our own Garrett Gordon joins us now to explain this won't be a cakewalk on the Riverwalk. Garrett, no. Nope. Is ooh -la, la as tough a team despite being from a mid-major conference? Their defense sketchy at times, but maybe their best defense could be their best offense. They've done that over the second half of the season. Arguably the hottest team in the country. They shocked the Big Ten, shocked Husker Nation, and the credit can be given to their leader at the top. Easy for Coach Miles to have his team's attention, especially after the way they performed the last time on the court, blowing an 18 point lead to Ohio State. Garrett Gordon, I'm confident, won't blow it when it comes to breaking down the Huskers' next opponent in the Baylor Bears. Garrett, I'll try. Oh, uh, Terran Petaway surely will get his for Nebraska, but who's the guy that's laying in the weeds for the Huskers that? can have an impact Friday against the Bears. They come. He's definitely not your average college coach, but it works for Tim Miles and it works for Nebraska. In just his second year in Lincoln, he's guided the Huskers to the NCAA tournament, and he doesn't want to stop there. What a treat it would be for basketball fans in our state. Creighton and Nebraska renewing their rivalry on the biggest of stages. Let's go ahead and bring back the guys from the drive. Nick and Joe. Nick, what in your mind has to happen to make this glorious battle go down. Finally, it's NCAA tournament time and it's shaping up to be quite the week here in San Antonio. History can be made by both Nebraska and Creighton. However, it's the group of Creighton seniors that are vowing to make a deep tournament run. Uh, the way they finished the season 10 and two in the Big Ten, They've got a shot, and uh, why not with Tim Miles on the sidelines? He's one of the best coaches in the country. Close for about five minutes. <laughs> Louisiana Lafayette has one guy who's really, really good. He doesn't really have much around him, but uh, I think the Jays cruise. It'll be tight, maybe for a few minutes. Don't blink. Well, guys, I don't think anyone saw this coming here in San Antonio. Baylor clearly the better team on this night as they win 85-55, but the ride, as they say, has to come to an end at some point, and tonight is that night for the Creighton Blue Jays. Coming up in sports, we'll have more reaction from the team. We'll go inside the locker room and hear what they have to say on the season-ending loss here in the NCAA tournament. Let's send it back to you guys in studio. Well, Justin, obviously it's a somber mood here in San Antonio as Creighton were once again one win away from history, and the Blue Jays once again fail to reach the Sweet 16. For the third year in a row, Creighton would find themselves in the exact same spot. The round of 32, one win away from making history, one win away from the Sweet 16. Hello again from the AT&T Center in San Antonio. I'm Chase Williams. The Blue Jays would play the Bears of Baylor this time around, but unfortunately, Creighton played its worst game of the season at the worst possible time. When they came here to New York, their Big East debut nearly flawless and two blowout wins to open this tournament, only to have Providence crush their championship dreams. It would have been nice to win the Big East championship. Obviously, they miss out on the regular season title. They miss out on the tournament title here, but their ultimate goal is to reach the Sweet 16 of the NCAA tournament, and that is still out there for the taking. We'll find out tomorrow what their seed is. Most likely, it'll be a three seed, maybe a four seed at worst, but they can still do what they ultimately want to achieve, and that is reach the Sweet 16.